Hello everyone and welcome to the video about the side project of my side project. If you are new to the channel, and let's be honest, you are, I am making a city slash community builder game and in the last update, which was like last week or so, I talked about how I implemented terrain generation in Bevy. In the beginning I was quite happy with the solution in general, but since then I realized there are some obvious flaws to it. And I had no ability to fine tune parts of the terrain, I was only able to edit the mesh as a whole, which meant that trying to find that perfect seed for random generation took ages. The whole system needed a better approach. So naturally, I opened Blender and shaped the terrain by hand. That's what a reasonable person would do. Unfortunately for me and my product roadmap, I'm not one. So I embarked on a journey of implementing a better terrain editor in Bevy directly. Why not to have another project written with an engine that is still early in development and introduces breaking changes every 3 months? The initial design of the app was that it's going to be modular, which means I can edit multiple planes separately. And secondly, text-based, which means all instructions will be written down as a config file. Which makes the acronym MTB, which sounds very terrainous. Let's see how those first ideas survived the test of time. In terms of modularity, the editor allows to create unlimited amounts of meshes and they all can be edited separately. Here you can see how I can apply different colors and modifiers to each plane. Modularity, all good. Regarding the text space part, I was happy with it as I was able to write changes in the config file and Bevy's hot reloading was automatically applying changes to the mesh in the app. For limited amount of options, it worked really well. Problems started when I wanted to apply modifier to very specific part of the mesh and all of a sudden it became really annoying because typing in exact locations turned out to be almost impossible. I admit it was a surprise to my programming oriented brain that clicking and selecting stuff is just way more easier. So text space is unfortunately gone. Let me show you how the current version of editor works. To create a basic mesh plane, I set the dimensions and number of vertices for the plane and then click on the button. Vertices are spawned alongside the mesh as child entities of the plane and they are represented as black spheres. There are some basic settings available in the editor, like the size of vertices or the lighting. You can also view the mesh in wireframe mode. To start editing the mesh, we go to, obviously, edit mode and then select vertices to edit using pointer, box select or brush select method. I have multiple working modifiers available already. One of them is value modifier, which simply changes the height of peaked vertices. In order to see the changes more clearly, I can apply color gradient modifier to the whole mesh. In order to do it, I double click on the mesh to select all vertices and then apply modifier. The color of vertices will change based on their height. Another useful modifier is random noise. It will apply a noise function based on the selected parameters. If you check the reset every time button, it will automatically clear the previous changes before applying new function. If it's not checked, it will keep adding the height to the vertex. There are some other modifiers that you can see in the UI, but currently they are so experimental even I don't trust them. If I need to clear the changes from the mesh, I can just use value modifier and set heights of all vertices to zero. As an example, in order to create an island like this, I can simply use brush select to draw the shape of the island from the vertices. Then I use the value modifier to change the height of those vertices. If the geometry of the mesh is relatively low, the shape of the mesh will remain odd and sharp. In order to smooth it out, I use dragging option to adjust the position of peaked vertices. It will only move the vertex in two dimensions, keeping the height unchanged. I find it quite satisfying how the mesh is updated in real time. What happens is that I have a system called drag that moves the selected vertices based on the mouse position change, and then there is another system that detects the changes made to vertices. If any of the vertices was updated, this function will get its index and apply changes to corresponding set of attributes. If you don't like the recent changes you made to the terrain, you can simply undo them using Ctrl Z shortcut. 
By the way, this project taught me about the magic of undo function. It's something we take for granted in any software, but implementing it is a challenge on its own. In this case, I simply keep the last 20 versions of the vertex data in the memory as a resource, and every time I call the function, I load the vertices from the previous state. I would call this implementation quite lazy. As you can imagine, it would scale badly for larger amount of vertices, and it can use a lot of memory, but it works just okay for now. After the mesh is finished, I can simply save it to the JSON file. JSON stores the information about the mesh and each vertex position and color. As you can see, the span function will first recreate the mesh and then it will go through the list of vertices and update the attributes accordingly. And this is how the similar island I made before looks when it's imported into my game. As you can see, the game also went through some visual changes, which hopefully I will be able to share soon in another devlog. As a last note, the MTP Terrain Editor is available on GitHub and you can find a link to it in the description. I'm going to keep it open source and if you feel like it's something that resonates with you and you would like to contribute to it for some reason, feel free to reach out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Goodbye.